How many firsts can I pack into one day? Let's see. Uh, first skyline, check. First right-hand drive stick shift, check. Okay, so first off, this is not what you expected, meaning this is not an R32 GTR. Uh, this is a GTS4. So, look, I'll put it in BMW nomenclature. If you think about the M cars, the GTR, I know Nissan fans want to hurt me, but just follow along with the thinking. If you think of the M car, this is the car just below the M car. And I'm coming to this car wondering why the cult fandom, why the fanboy nature of this car? And what makes it worthwhile to go through all the hassle, money and time and all that stuff just to import one into the US? Why would you go backwards? Why would you go through all this hassle to import a car, find it, wait as the owner did. Kaz waited for this car for 11 months. The Skyline's been a brand for Nissan for a long time, since the 50s. The current version of the Skyline, if you don't want to think about it in today's terms, is the Infiniti Q50. That is the current generation of this car. This R32 is the eighth generation. What's amazing to me is the solidity of this car. 25 years old, all right? I feel like this car was gonna be a bit of a rattle trap and not that well built and I am entirely wrong. This car has almost 13,000 kilometers on it. Everything about this car just feels so well built. It's not pretty. And you can disagree with me, it's purposeful. It serves a function. The outside of this car reflects the fact it's a souped up Skyline, it's not quite the GTR. It doesn't have the punched out fenders, it's got a slightly different front end. Of course, this does still maintain the GTR wheel inside. It is a hybrid. It's simple. It's clean. It's very 90s. And as you'd expect, I mean, things are not aging well. The plastic trim is very cheap, and that's okay. The controls are so straightforward. I kind of wish we would go back to this time or continue this thinking, because some cars today are designed in a particular way that seem like designed for the sake of design, rather than designed for the simplicity and enjoyment of driving. Okay, so put the right-hand drive experience aside for a moment. This is the car that is a GTR without the motor. The GTR, of course, has 50, 60 more horsepower than this. Anything below 4,000 RPM, you're gonna wonder why does this car have such a mystique about it? And then when 4,000 hits, then you're gonna think, ah, I understand, I get it now. I miss inline sixes. I know we have them in BMWs still, but I miss other manufacturers like Nissan making inline sixes and doing it well. Even with 220 horsepower, this car doesn't feel like it's an antique. There's the turbo. All right, that's to the floor. Oh, and of course, <laughs> also kilometers. I have no idea what's going on right now. I'm, I'm completely confused. Somebody convert 160 kilometers for me real quick. Yeah, there we go. Left hand. Left hand's getting educated today. I like it. Learning to shift with my left hand. The rest of the body's normal, but that's a change for sure. Gearbox wants to go in the right order, and that does help you. I wouldn't say the throws are long on this transmission. They're, they're very sure of themselves. They're more sure than you are, despite the muscle memory of my right hand wanting to shift, but there's a door there. It's not necessarily about having the most power. It's about the driving feel and the mechanical nature of everything coming through that very few cars, if any, on the road today provide. This is a car from that perfect era in Japanese vehicles where they were still all very analog and yet they were unbelievably well tuned. The dynamics were fantastic. All modern cars are more numb than this. They just, they are. Because we've got so many more safety features and that kind of thing. That's a consideration. If this is a first car, 16 year old, there's not a ton of safety features in this. All the modern stuff obviously isn't here. But the car is communicative and you can tell what's going on. And as a driver, you can really learn stuff here. The 300ZX that we got in the 90s in this country, the Z32, it had the exact same four-wheel steering system that this car has. It's all hydraulic, and it does do a good job of making this car feel even shorter. The turn-in on this car, there's, there's no hesitation or slop or anything like that. 
especially going through a long hairpin like this, why is four-wheel steering not an option on performance cars at a lower price in this day and age? I mean, here Nissan put this car on a, again, relatively affordable car, and yet four-wheel steering nowadays still seems like something exotic. It's a feature that's only on really expensive exotic cars. The transition between corners, there's not any hesitation. There's, there's nothing, it just, it's direct. For a 25-year-old car, it kind of rides like magic. I can't believe how good the ride is. It does a really good job of being enthusiast. There's not much body roll here. It's not crashing over anything. The damping is superb. It hits bumps, it absorbs them, it gives you just enough information without throwing you around. I'm quite shocked at the speed you can carry with the confidence that you've got. This car is the other alternative to Subarus. This is the car everybody should have in Utah. With the weather the way it is, unpredictable nature, great driving roads, this is delightful. I have to say that even if this wasn't right-hand drive, it would feel special. It's just done well. Everything works, everything's informative. Okay, I I'm seeing it. I'm feeling like this is Nissan at the peak of their engineering abilities. I mean, we know with the R35 GTR, they can build amazing stuff. But I'm wondering if they've lost the ability to make a direct road connection like they have in this car. We recently drove the 2017 GTR during our pilgrimage trip in Germany, and I almost wanted less power and more interaction. No, I, I did want that and here it is in the R32. I mourn the loss for future cars to go away from this. That's worth paying for. That's worth the time and the trouble and the effort to get a car like this to America. I have to admit, this is a lot of trouble to go to for your first car. Sourcing it, chasing it down, driving on the right hand side. I'm impressed that Kaz has done it. There's some sacrifices required. Kaz, interestingly enough, is 16. This is his first car. He was able to source it, buy it, ship it, still spend less than 10 grand. That's why this is his first car ever. Jump right into right-hand drive, manual transmission, everything wrong for the way we drive in the US. I can see why Kaz likes this, but I remain shocked. This is his first car ever. I need to get farther right in the lane too. Hey, that's more normal. <laughs> I keep reaching for the turn signal here. It's, it's, it's on this side, it's, it's over here. 